right. Well, good afternoon again. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, I see that we still have a few trickling in, but I do want to get started so that we can reserve, you know, all the time that we can for this presentation. Uh, but I hope you are all doing well. Uh, my name is Kelly Spanauer, and I am a Senior Admissions Coordinator here in uh, the Office of Admissions. Uh, we are hoping that everyone has adjusted well to all the changes that we've all had to make for the fall semester. Here at UNCW, we are trying our best to still offer as many opportunities as we can for you to learn more about our campus and the opportunities that we offer to our students, of course, all virtually. Uh, for this webinar, we have invited our Office of Student Leadership and uh, Engagement to share with you an overview of the opportunities uh, that they have in their department. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to them so they can introduce themselves, um, and then I'm going to take it over for just a minute to uh, talk a little bit about some housekeeping items. Great, thank you, Kelly. Uh, Lindsay, are you okay? I'll, I'll get us started. Awesome. Hi, everybody. I am really excited to be sharing um, some information with you all today. My name is Erin Williamson. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you today about my really cool job, and hopefully you are here soon and we get to meet and you get to take part in some of that. Um, I serve as the Assistant Director for Leadership Development and Community Engagement in the Office of Student Leadership and Engagement. It's a mouthful. Basically, I get to do a lot of really fun things with students around learning about leadership, learning skills that help them practice leadership, connecting with uh, community service opportunities within the community and on campus, um, a lot of really fun stuff. And my name is Lindsay Tryon, and I am the Assistant Director of Fraternity and Sorority Life in the Office of Student Leadership and Engagement. Um, so I think what's really cool about it is that a lot of the stuff that Erin does on the day-to-day -day really does impact and, and is a part of what fraternities and sororities do. So to be in an office that's dedicated to what we do is very unique. And so I'm really excited to kind of share with you what we do every day and how we work with students. Awesome. Well, I am... Very excited uh, to have them here with us this afternoon. I just want to go over a couple, couple quick housekeeping items um, before we get started. First is that when you came in today, I'm sure you all are aware of the webinar settings now, but we have uh, muted you uh, just so we don't get any feedback or background noise during the process of the, the webinar today. Um, however, we do have a Q&A feature uh, for you guys to use if you have questions, um, and I will be facilitating those questions at the end of this webinar. Um, so if, if you're thinking of any questions as we're going through this presentation, feel free to go ahead and jot those down in the Q&A, uh, but we will facilitate those questions at the end of, the, of our webinar here. So I'm going to turn it over uh, without further ado to our presenters, um, and you'll get started. Did it. I started talking and I was muted. Everyone has to do that on at least like once a day, right? Um, I've shared our OSLE website. Lindsay and I are really excited to kind of use that as a way to talk through some of the things we're going to talk about today um, for a couple of reasons. A, I think we're really proud of it, um, but also it means um, that you have easy access um, to go back and review some of the things that we talk about today. So that way you're super clear on um, how to find the information that we're referencing. Um, so um, one of the things I'm really excited to share with you all first is just a little bit about OSLE and our philosophy and um, really what we're about and why would you connect with us as a student. Um, so the Office of Student Leadership and Engagement, we really believe that every student is capable of practicing leadership. Um, and that's because it's not really about the positions or titles that you hold. Um, it's about your ability and interest and um, it really igniting um, and sparking social change around you and working with um, others to do that. So we offer lots of experiences um, and opportunities that help you as a student develop the school, uh, the skills and the tools um, you need to be successful in that practice, both on campus and in our community but also our hope is that you gain really valuable skills with us so that you can put them into practice um, after you leave us and go do wonderful things after graduation. Um, so we have a few kind of core areas of our department. Um, Lindsay and I, as, as you kind of picked up maybe from our titles, we have a lot of areas or a lot of opportunities around leadership development. 
um, community engagement, which you know is connecting to the community that can mean, that mean a lot of different things, which I'll talk about in a bit, um, but also fraternity and sorority life. The other cool part about our office is we also um, provide some opportunities to recognize students that are really excelling in those areas. Um, we oversee uh, the primary award ceremony for students across campus. Now there are awards coming from lots of places um, across campus, but we do facilitate a, a major one that happens on campus. Um, so I wanna take a minute just to overview some of the opportunities when I talk about leadership development. I wanna share and highlight a couple of experiences that you could take part in um, if you were to be a part of our community, right? Um, so on our website here, I'm gonna click this lead tab um, if you are following along on your own and, and uh, clicking around or if you want to come back to these pages later. Um, so kind of what I was talking about, about, you know, our mission is to really help students practice their leadership. Leadership de development for us means that you're learning about leadership. It means you're developing skills um, that help you with that. And it means that you're making sense, you're making meaning of your experiences on how to incorporate that into your leadership practice. Um, so one of the first programs I want to talk about that um, is a is a one that we have done for many years. We actually just hosted this past weekend. Um, we have an annual Seahawk Leadership Conference. Um, and so like I said, this just happened this weekend. This conference is planned by students. It's for students. We even had students that were presenting as peer um, workshop uh, presenters, which was really cool, and they're sharing some of their own stories. Um, another experience that is really great where you get to plug in kind of conference style, which is really cool, um, is our Elevate Leadership Summit. Um, and so this, of course, as you can imagine, might look a little different in the spring, um, but this is a weekend leadership retreat where um, you get to learn a little bit more about the challenges and the relationships around leadership and learn a few um, strategies and skills that you might take along your own journey um, of leadership. Another cool thing that we offer students, and really this is every student, right? It's not open to only uh, like specific groups of students or specific students by nomination or anything like that. Um, we have lots of opportunities around leadership workshops. Some of these are part of a series that you can return and be a part of a continuing conversation. Um, others are kind of one-time experiences around a specific conversation, um, but we also do a lot of custom workshops. So we'll go into student organizations, to classrooms, um, all of our first year students and many of our transfer students participate um, in a university seminar, a uni 101 or a uni 201. We're in a lot of those classrooms. So you get to engage with us and our students around um, these leadership workshops. Um, one in particular I will highlight is all around um, emotionally intelligent leadership. Um, and I personally kind of geek out on this a lot, but I'll share with you all why emotionally intelligent leadership is a high priority for us in terms of providing it as a way for you to develop in this area. We know that our employers, the ones that are looking to hire you after you graduate um, or even before you graduate, is um, they're looking for these skills related to emotional intelligence, right? Your ability to kind of manage your own emotions, to help tap into those emotions of others, um, to control your motivation and, and the tools behind that, to be able to read a room, be able to understand context to a situation. We explore a lot of these things in these workshops, um, which is really exciting. Another tool that we provide to you in the leadership area um, are some different opportunities to connect to leadership assessments. So there's um, one in particular I wanna talk about called um, Clifton Strengths Finder. Um, this is present in a lot of high schools, so I would not be surprised if you have engaged in this in some way. Maybe it's part of a class or um, a job somewhere, you know, or maybe in a church or another organization in your community that you've um, participated in. Uh, but Clifton Strengths Finder is an assessment that helps you discover your um, top strengths, the talents that you use the most to be successful. And we have a really robust program around Clifton Strengths um, as a way to help you understand it. To connect one-on-one -on -one with coaches, we have open workshops, we connect with student organizations on this. Um, a lot of really great work around tapping into your strengths and being able to navigate those um, moving forward. So um, I'll mention quickly too that um, in the leadership area of our office as well as others, Lindsay's going to talk about this, I'll talk about this related to community engagement as well. We have opportunities for you to actually become kind of a member of our OSLE family, um, as we like to, to refer to it. So we have some student leader roles in men, all the areas in our office. 
um, within our leadership area, we have an organization called um, the Seahawk Leadership Advisory Council. This is a group of students that um, facilitate some of these peer workshop conversations, right? They go into classrooms to student orgs um, virtually and in person as we have done last um, several months. Um, but this is the group of students who plan the Seahawk Leadership Conference that I talked to you all about. So opportunities for you to not just attend programs and, and um, learn with us, but to actually be a part of our family and help make some of these things happen, which is really cool. Um, if I jump over to our service area, right? So we talked about OSLE is leadership development, it's community engagement, it's fraternity story life, and it's that celebration recognition process. Um, as you can imagine, our community engagement, our community service offerings are looking pretty special these days. We've had to really take a look at what does that look like for students, but we have not stopped in um, finding opportunities throughout this whole COVID experience uh, that allow students to still participate and learn um, from their community. So for us, engaging with community is really about um, how you practice leadership. So those two ideas are, are linked. Um, so when you look at opportunities with us, right now we're exploring lots of cool um, virtual volunteering um, that you might engage with as a student, right? Um, offering those. Um, we're doing some really cool things around like community chats. So inviting uh, leaders from the Wilmington community to speak with students, hosting panels. Some of those are student-led, um, as I mentioned, which has been really cool. Um, we offer local volunteering, but also some regional volunteering. We don't know what this will look like moving forward. We're in a bit of a, you know, we're wait, wait and see period, but um, typically we offer uh, some break trips. So over spring break or fall break, um, you know, you can travel with other students to regionally to engage um, in their communities and learn a little bit more on different issues. We've been to Atlanta. We've done a local trip where students stay in Wilmington over spring break. Um, we've been to Houston after Hurricane Harvey. Um, so really, it's not just the local experiences, but the regional and perhaps in other states as well. Um, a big area of our community engagement, a lot of people think community service, um, is um, thinking about civic engagement. So thinking about who are your local leaders? Um, we're obviously in the middle of an election right now, right? So OSLE is also uh, your stop to help um, understand and engage in those sorts of things. So as you can imagine right now, we have a lot of activity around the election and registering to vote and your absentee ballots and we're hosting workshops and um, debate watch events and lots of social media activity. We have students walking in, calling, dropping into virtual hours um, to get their questions answered about how do I vote for the very first time. It's very exciting. Um, or maybe it's not their first time, um, but answering a lot of those questions. Um, and like I mentioned, a lot of these opportunities are open to every student. So you don't have to be a student leader in our office to take advantage. These are um, experiences and opportunities open to all of our students. Um, I mentioned student leader roles related to leadership development. We have a student leader role um, within this community engagement area um, as well. So um, our students that are connected to that are called community engagement specialists um, and they coordinate service projects. They coordinate some of these community chats or virtual panels. Um, they really get to um, live out their passions, whether it's sustainability or working with children or um, homelessness, food insecurity, I mean, whatever their passion area is, they're helping us to develop experiences around that. And then they get the support from our office. Um, so again, and there's one last thing I wanna share with you, and then I'm gonna pass it over to Lindsay. Um, if you didn't know, it's actually very common for some of um, college students to experience food insecurity, right? And we have that on our campus as well, where that means they don't necessarily know where their next meal is coming from, or it causes a lot of stress thinking about where their next meal is coming from. So we also uh, have a, a partnership with um, our local organization, our Catholic student organization on campus um, to host a food pantry for students. So this is open to students obviously, but also we do a lot to support this. So food drives, um, sharing information over social media, organizing volunteers um, is an opportunity for you to get engaged with as well and also a service to you as a student. So, whew, I hope I got through most of that. I wanted to pack in some details, but, but Lindsay, I will pass that over to you to talk with us a little bit about Fraternity Shorty Life. Thank you, Erin. Here, I'll stop sharing. So, there we go. Let, me, let me take over. All right, so um, 
we have our fraternity and sorority life area. Um, and so our role in the Office of Student Leadership and Engagement is to serve as the on-campus advisors and advocates. So my job is to work with the students that we have on campus, with other areas of the university, um, with regional or local volunteers and the national, of national office that oversees the organization, and kind of be that glue of making sure that we're all working together and we all know what's happening so that we can positively support the organization and help them achieve whatever it is that they're trying to work on. Um, then we also have governing councils um, that we directly advise. Um, and so all, um, we have 32 chapters on campus. They belong to one of four governing councils that are led by student leaders that are elected by their peers. Um, so working and, and having meetings with the presidents um, and how they can move our community forward um, and how they can kind of help elevate the fraternity and sorority community on campus. Um, so this is our fraternity and sorority life portion of the website. Um, I'm gonna start off actually by going into our fast facts. Um, so we have about 1,500 students in our fraternity and sorority community in 32 chapters. Um, philanthropy and service are two really big components of being a member of a fraternal organization. Um, and so last year we raised over um, $330,000, which is a lot. Um, and then we performed over 25,000 hours of, of service in the local Wilmington community. Um, academics is another expectation in being a part of a fraternity or sorority. And 74% of our fraternity or sorority members have at least a 3.0 or above. Um, so that's, that's kind of it. Like when it comes to being in a fraternity or sorority, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just about the fun, though we do have fun, but we also give back and we also make sure that we're performing well academically. Um, so I'm going to go back here. We actually on our page have this whole perspective student section, um, which is designed for you as perspective students. Um, and so I'm going to start off with our how to join section. So we do have some membership requirements. So in order to join a fraternity and sorority on this campus, um, you need to be registered full time at UNCW. So that's 12 credit hours. Um, and then if you have a college GPA, so if you're coming in um, with the GPA or maybe you decide that you want to wait a little bit and then join later, you need to have at least a 2.5 GPA. And the reason why, again, going back to academics are really important, um, but then also because a lot of our national organizations have a requirement for membership that is at or above a 2.5. Um, so even if you decide maybe not to join right away and you want to wait, just make sure that you're keeping those grades up because otherwise you might not be able to join. Um, and then all of our councils have a slightly different process in order to join them based off of how they're organized and how they're founded. And so our, um, our inner fraternity council, um, which is for our social men's fraternities, they take, they take members both the fall and spring semester um, on their own time. Our National Panhellenic Council, which is our historically black fraternities and sororities, tend to look for more seasoned members. So you have to have at least one, maybe two semesters of college credits under your belt before you're able to join. Um, our Panhellenic Council, which is home to our social women's sororities, um, they have their big primary recruitment process at the beginning of the fall semester, and that's the only time that we can guarantee that they're actually all taking members. And then our newest council, the United Greek Council, um, which is home to our culturally based and religious based organizations, um, kind of do their own thing with their chapters. They don't have kind of a unified process. So going back to our prospective students page, I want to kind of show you our councils. So I mentioned very quickly, IFC, Panhellenic, all of that. Who's in those organizations? What organizations do we actually have on campus? So, our Inner Fraternity Council, or IFC, like I said, they are our men's social fraternities, and we have 14 men's groups on campus that fall under this organization. So they have their own executive board, their own governing council, and then the 14 fraternities kind of report and are a part of them. Um, our whole website is set up so that you can click on each one of their pages and it'll take you to more detailed information about that organization. So if you wanna learn more about one of them, you can always come back on your own um, and kind of click there to learn more. Our National Panhellenic Council, again, this is our historically black fraternities and sororities, also known as the Divine Nine. Um, we have five of them on this campus, three sororities and two fraternities. So it is a co-ed group. Again, they elect a council or a governing board um, that kind of helps oversees them. Our Panhellenic Council, which is our social women's 
um, sororities. We have 11 of them on our campus. Um, and then the United Greek Council, which is our culturally based and religious based um, fraternities and sororities um, is also on here as well. Um, when it comes to housing, um, we don't have official Greek houses outside of some of our Panhellenic organizations have um, on campus suites in our university suites residence hall. Um, so if you do join one of those organizations and you want to live in the suite um, once you're a sophomore, um, that is an option for you for membership as well. Um, we also like to be transparent in how our organizations are doing. Um, so we have created a scorecard um, which allows you to kind of see how, how they did for academics each semester, how did each organization do in terms of number of hours of service or in philanthropy dollars raised. Um, it also does show if there were any conduct issues. So um, this is something that we get a lot of parents or guardians asking for. So if you're, you have a guardian that's kind of on the fence about whether or not you should join, you can always look over the scorecard together to kind of identify like which groups do you feel might be the best fit based off of the service or philanthropy that they've done or how they're performing academically to help you kind of make that decision. We also have, um, speaking of our parents or guardians, we do have a parents page just for them. Um, so they can learn about how to support you as you join an organization and what membership looks like. Um, they also, we have a, a frequently asked question. So again, these are the questions that we tend to get a lot when it comes to being in a fraternity or sorority. And we also have our, our um, terminology. And then we also have a way to report some concerns. So if there's anything that you're worried about on campus, um, we have a way to report that as well. Um, you can also, if for some reason you have concerns, you can also do it through our make a report button right here um, to learn about hazing and how to report that. So like Erin said, in addition to leadership, service, and fraternity and sorority life, we also do see the celebrations portion. Um, and so there are two really big events that we oversee um, for, our, our, for our students on campus. So one is double words, which is to celebrate our student organization. So all student organizations have the chance to win a SAMI, a golden SAMI. Um, think of it like the Emmys. It's a really um, nice opportunity to celebrate everything that the student organizations did as well as celebrate some of our student leaders. Um, and then we also have Cornerstone and Senior Excellence. Um, and these are to celebrate specific students for individual awards. Um, some of the awards that are offered through Cornerstone might be tied to a scholarship opportunity. It just really depends on what it is. So a lot of ways that we can celebrate and honor you as you become a student and move through college at UNCW. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Erin for our last little bit. Thank you. I had a panic moment, by the way, while you were talking, Lindsay, so my phone rang in here. That's the downside to doing this from our offices. But anyway, hopefully they don't call back. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited to wrap us up. I just want to share with you all that, you know, I know a lot of you are coming in with, um, maybe you are hoping to um, apply to get federal work study um, through your financial aid, you're looking to find a job or to work on campus. Um, there are a lot of other ways to become a part of you know, our OSLE family, like I said. So we do host um, paid roles in our office. We have office assistants um, that they help us a lot at the front desk, right? So in addition to some of the admin things you might imagine, like helping to answer phone, uh, phones, managing our inbox, helping with mail, coordinating, you know, smaller projects, kind of front of house projects. Um, those students are empowered quite a bit to help us with different areas. So I have one student right now that's really running our social media related to um, our UNCW votes initiative, our election things. Um, a student that's working with our workshops, tracking all of our attendance. So these students are really empowered to help us um, meet our mission, not just kind of, you know, staff a front desk. Um, but we also have students that help us run um, our marketing for OSLE. So um, if you are interested in marketing, you're interested in social media, if you're looking in looking for um, a position on campus where you get to exercise those skills. We need it. Lindsay and I joke that we're like, we use social media, but I don't know that we're like truly in touch as much as we used to be. Um, so we really love having students um, employed in our office to help us do this. 
The other thing I'll share with you all is, um, it's my, one of my favorite things that we do in the office is a lot of opportunities for very custom internships. So regardless of what you're wanting to study, regardless of your career path, whether you know what that is or don't, um, or you feel like maybe a career, how does that fit to OSLE? Um, there are skills that you can learn through an internship in our office. So we have students that are helping to facilitate sessions. They're coordinating programs. They are, um, thinking about, they've coordinated service projects, um, worked with our fraternity and sorority area. I, I, I think one of our interns helped with that scorecard. Am I right, Lindsay, or is that, our, that was our grad student? A little bit of both. Yeah, so lots of areas. If you're interested in what we're doing and you want some work experience, we can help with that um, as well. In addition to graduate assistantship, so if we have anybody here who's here because they're interested in UNCW maybe as a grad student, um, we employ graduate assistants as well, um, which is a little bit different. You know, those are just for graduate students. Did I miss anything, Lindsay, on the other employment opportunities? I think that, that might be... I think you got it all. I think so too. Well, Kelly, I will hand it back over to you for questions. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for all that information. I'm literally sitting here, it just brought me back to my college experience. Mm -hmm. And I know that it, my, my experience as a student would not have been the same if I was not involved in all of the student involvement and all the things uh, student organizations wise in Greek life and ACE yeah. that I was a part of. So I always encourage students to really dive into it, at least research it. Um, if it's a Greek life is not for you, that's okay. There are several other opportunities in leadership that you can get involved with. Um, so I'm just very thankful that they were here today to just get that eye-opening experience. Um, but we do have a couple questions in our Q&A, so Great. we'll get started on those. So the first one is, um, is there any leadership workshops, summits, or retreats that students in high school can participate in before they become a student at UNCW? Yeah, I can share a little bit there. Um, I think while those are a little more limited, right, because our, um, the folks we do serve are current students, we have had opportunities where students can participate. Um, before they get to UNCW. Um, the main one on the, that I'll share about is our Seahawk Leadership Conference. That wasn't the case with the event, you know, that we just had this weekend, just because it was much more limited as we try to navigate kind of the virtual experience. But our past two years, so our 2019 conference, right, we're in 2020, yes, our 2019 conference and our 2018 um, conference, we worked with the New Hanover County Schools um, to identify some students that could participate. And they came to campus, participated with us throughout the day, um, which was really exciting. And so we're certainly looking to do more of that. I will also share right now, um, if you're interested in like what's going on right now that I can plug into um, related to the conference, actually, and actually I'm gonna open up the, um, our website so I can show you, um, is because our conference was virtual, um, we did some recording of our sessions um, and um, actually posted that on our website. So, and they are open Zoom link recording. So if you're just like really jazzed about, hey, what's happening, what happened at this conference, the one that just happened this weekend, we had some really cool community uh, speakers, some st current student speakers. Um, those recordings are posted right here and you don't need a password or anything to view those. So um, if you're kind of curious right now what just happened, um, I really encourage you to check that out. Um, the other thing I will share is um, we have some flexibility when it comes to some of our like workshops. Um, I have done some work in the community for high school students where their advisor or their um, like the one of the one examples I'm thinking of it was through like a, a program like after school program that sounds really juvenile it was for high school students and I don't know what to call it but it was related to like pre um, the pre medical field it was students who were interested in going into to healthcare fields. Um, and we came in and did some strengths work. So it's a little more limited just because um, of us really seeking to serve current students, but um, there are some things that are open right now and that conference in particular um, is something we try to open up to students for sure. Awesome. Uh, the next question is, is there anything within uh, your department, your office, that has to do with the LBGTQ uh, community? Yeah, I can share a little bit, Lindsay. I don't know if you have things you wanna share on top of that as well. Um, I will share that, first of all, um, we do a lot of partnering with an organization and an office on campus that directly supports those students. So first I have to just say that there's an office um, and a community on our campus that uh, specifically supports programs 
advocates for works with um, that population of students or students on campus. Uh, but we've had some really great partnerships um, since I've been here. I, I wouldn't say that any of our programs are like specifically geared. We really try to market to um, all of our students and be welcoming to all of our students so that they're open to everyone. Um, but we've done some cool partnerships in the past. Um, one I'll share about in particular, a lot of it has to do around our workshops because those are, because they're shorter programs, they're like a smaller time frame. Um, we partnered with uh, Brooke Lambert, which is our, the coordinator for the, um, the Mo and Schultz LGBTQIA Resource Center. Um, I think it was a year ago at this point, um, but we held a specific, a specifically themed emotionally intelligent leadership workshop that was around being an ally and really working to understand our identities, um, whether that you're whether you're part of that community or not. Um, really, just working to understand um, how do our identities around gender identity and sexual orientation and um, other aspects of ourselves how does that influence how we practice leadership? Because knowledge and awareness of those identities directly connect to emotional intelligence, um, and so Brooke and I kind of co-facilitated. I will also share that a lot of our staff um, and our students participate in trainings and programs that are geared to help us be better allies. Um, and so do we have programs that are specifically for that community? I would say no, because we kind of cater to the, the greater um, student community. But we have a great relationship with the organization and the office that does um, and create some really strategic partnerships. Lindsay, would you add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, I would say like from the fraternity and sorority life standpoint, um, we do have um, members in our organizations that identify with the LGBTQIA community. And so that's something that I have really enjoyed working here is because we do have a community that is inclusive um, in that regard and, and welcoming. Um, our students have been learning recently, um, especially that, you know, not everybody is coming in with the same knowledge and understanding of different populations on campus. And so I do want to kind of plug that um, two of our governing councils recently just added in a diversity, equity and inclusion position to help with education around um, a lot of different populations, including that one. Um, and so we're going to be seeing a lot more programs on the council level um, about different populations um, in the next couple of months, I would say. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, I did have an, another question come up, but I, I answered that one through text because it was more of an admissions question. Uh, so I just kind of want to kind of gear that towards everyone that if you guys have questions for admissions, please just kind of reach out through email. Um, at admissions uh, at uncw.edu. Um, I just want to make this webinar very focused in on our department that we have here today. Um, anything admissions wise, we can definitely answer through email for you guys. Um, but I definitely want to keep the floor going uh, with questions. We don't have any in the Q&A right now, but I, we would love to answer your questions. So I'll give it just a few more minutes. Um, if you think of anything, please go ahead and type it in that Q&A box and uh, we will get that facilitated out uh, to get your questions answered. And if there's anything y'all can think of to add while we're waiting, go for it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I would just share, um, you know, maybe this is like a selfish plug. I've been here five years, Lindsay. You've been here two, a little more than two, right? And Just over two. Yeah, I, I don't want to speak for Lindsay. I'm sure she'll share as well. But five years here, I really enjoy our um, campus community here. So I'm just excited that y'all are expressing interest and in trying to learn more about becoming a part of the community here. Um, because it really is, this is my third college campus between me being a student and my professional career. Um, and don't tell my alma mater, but I really enjoy working here. And then I don't know if I'd go back and work for my alma mater, not because it ain't great, but because I'm really happy here and I'm enjoying it. So I'm just happy that y'all have this interest and want to learn some more. Yeah, absolutely. I, I 100% agree. I think, you know, a lot has happened in the two years that I've been here in terms of what's hit hot hit Wilmington, um, but I've never been with a college campus that has pulled together um, and really displayed what community is until I got here. Um, and I've been working with, with you know, college campuses for close to 10 years now. So see a lot of different things. This is, this is a place unlike any other, absolutely. Yeah, very true, very true. Yes, um, so I have a question in the Q&A. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, I know that you guys have specific specific programs in different offices and we have 
several departments on campus that do different things. So this question may not be geared towards your department. So we definitely want students to branch out and definitely go to our student organizations list uh, directory so you can see, because we have over 350 student organizations on our campus. But this question was, do you guys have anything similar to Best Buddies, which is kind of a program that helps people with disabilities? So is there anything okay. at UNCW that has that kind of program? Yeah, I can kind of speak to that actually. Um, the first organization that I can think of, um, the university uh, as a whole has a really strong relationship um, with them. It's called the Miracle League of Wilmington. Um, and it's a, a sports league that it provides kind of like that adapted experience. Um, and they even have this really special, um, their own special field um, in Wilmington. So I know this, some of this is pre COVID, but their relationship has continued. But um, you know, we had students in our office, I mentioned those community engagement specialists, the student role in our office that um, coordinates some service experiences. Um, that is an organization that some of our students have partnered with to help recruit students to volunteer and then they carpool and they all go volunteer together at, at Miracle League. Um, but our College of Health and Human Services also has like a really strong relationship with Miracle League. So it's not just us, there's a really strong connection um, to that organization as a whole um, in UNCW. So that's a specific example Example I'll share um, with you in terms of, um, you know, lots of ways that you can participate um, with a specific organization. Um, and I think more generally, I'll share with you that um, the really cool part about community engagement related to such a large organization like UNCW um, is that landscape of partnerships will shift and change as you're here. So Kelly was saying that there are student organizations that have really strong partnerships with um, specific populations or they're serving specific areas. You know, those student organizations may ebb and flow. The partnerships that OSLE, they have, we have had, have ebbed and flowed in the last, you know, the five years that I've been here. So even if when you get here right away, if you're struggling to find, you know, I really want to work with a population, right, of, of kids or adults with disabilities, you're not seeing it in OSLE, like specifically, that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It might be through a student, student organization or your college department. Um, but also I will share with you that our organizations in town, that, that you don't need to volunteer through OSLE to be an active member and volunteer. We really strongly encourage students to create your own relationship, um, which we can help start that or promote that um, with some of our organizations. But um, so Miracle League is one in particular. Oh, sure. Yeah, so um, I don't think you guys mentioned this, but this was a great question to bring up. Um, Brianna asked if there was a club fair or something similar to learn about different clubs and organizations. Yeah, Lindsay, you wanna take that one? Yeah, absolutely. So um, our Campus Activities and Involvement Center every year coordinates um, this thing called the Involvement Carnival. Actually, I think they do it every semester, but the fall is kind of the really big one. Um, and so you'll have student organizations out there. You'll have other university departments out there. Um, some of these organizations that we partner with and volunteer with might be out there too. Um, we just kind of take over chancellors and just a big space. Um, and you can just kind of walk around and, and get to know different clubs, different sport clubs, um, different departments, anyone that you could think of. Um, and then in addition to that, we also um, have a volunteer fair. So if you're looking for organizations to possibly volunteer with, maybe they're not ones that we have like our regular service opportunities with, but it is a nonprofit looking for volunteers, um, you can definitely come to that um, and meet some of our nonprofits in the area and find one that's a good fit for you. Yeah, absolutely. I have nothing to add. That was great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we had another one and I think I can answer some of this and I think you guys can answer some of this. So this was for a student that um, I think it kind of goes back to still being in high school. How can I get involved with some things? Um, it was talking about how can they attend events? Um, would it be virtual? Would it be through Zoom? Could I come and travel there? Um, I just want to kind of put in a little factor for admissions real quick um, because I know a lot of out-of-state and even in-state students want to see our campus and I know that there's a, there's a lot of colleges that are not providing tours right now at their university 
However, for UNCW, we did um, start our tours again, our guided tours around our university. So if you guys want to see our campus, it is very possible. Um, you just have to sign up for it uh, through the admissions web website, through your C-level account. Um, and if you have questions about that, please just email admissions and we can get you taken care of. But it is very possible. We're capping out uh, 10 people per tour. Uh, but we're having tours every single day. We had over 300 come to campus just last week. Um, and we're even doing them on Saturdays now. So if you can't come through the week and you want to make a weekend out of it, we are offering Saturday tours until right before Thanksgiving. Um, so definitely talk about it with your families. I know for seniors, seeing a campus is one of the biggest parts of making your decision. Um, so I don't want to make this about admissions, but I did just want to point that out um, because I know that's a big factor for a lot of people. So turning it back over to you guys, is there anything that they can do virtually? Do they have to travel to, I guess, attend, the, attend these events or is it really going to be once they get on to campus as a student? Yeah, I'll, I'll share um, the, all of the differences around COVID aside. So let's like put that aside for a moment. Um, typically our events, they are built for students that are here or at least in the area I, in terms of OSLE. So um, our in-person workshops and conferences and things that we'd hosted before, um, you know, are for students that are here um, once they are here and then they live here. Um, but I will tell you that COVID has really, it has helped um, OSLE in particular, I'll speak for us, um, really work to expand our offerings. And so, I'm twisting the question just a bit. I hope that's okay. But if you are a student that's thinking about, you know, what if I get there and many of my classes or all of my classes are online, we don't know what it's going to look like. Um, you know, can I still take advantage? And the answer to that is yes. I mean, we are offering lots of virtual experiences and I, we can't say for sure, but I don't think some of these virtual experiences are going away. I think even if everything's hunky-dory and COVID disappears and y'all come to campus and we're one big happy family, it's gonna be great. I think there'll still be virtual experiences um, because those have been so successful um, moving our workshops onto Zoom. Um, but even before that, I would zoom into online classes that were pre-COVID were online only classes and present to students or they were hybrid classes where we had some students that lived in another city and they and some students that were in the classroom and it, the classroom was a hybrid classroom, so we had both. I've presented to those. Um, so I guess it's, I, I would say yes, no, it, it's very complex, but in terms of if you find yourself here um, and then you find yourself a remote student taking online classes, OSLE is still gonna have opportunities for you, at least for what we can see right now, what we've learned mm -hmm. about COVID. Yeah, absolutely. To, to kind of echo what Aaron said at the beginning, a lot of our stuff is for fraternity and sorority life is geared for our fraternity and sorority members mm -hmm. um, or for the, the student community. Um, some of our chapters may have their own philanthropy events that anybody can attend as long as they pay admission to come to. Um, those are not really happening right now just because of the pandemic. Um, but if if we are still in the same situation next fall which i really hope that we aren't but if we are our fraternity and sorority community has actually done a really good job adapting to a virtual environment um, from virtual recruitment which i never thought i would ever see in my life to um, we have some chapters that are about to initiate their members virtually to um, greek week which is this really big annual week of competition and camaraderie is a hundred percent online this year um, we just had a video game tournament as part of it um, and then a virtual trivia night um, and different components of that so if you are remote that that is still going to be happening and, and a possibility um, for when you are here yeah, and I think that's great that we are so adaptable to what's going on right now. Um, yeah, just like Aaron said, I am hoping for a more normal sea spring, um, but I think we're literally taking this one day at a time as we're getting this. Um, but I don't see any more questions uh, coming in. Um, I do want to just say to the, all the students that are here today, again, just thank y'all for 
for participating. I am looking to continue to plan these webinars with different student services throughout the rest of this year. Um, November is a big application time frame for admissions, so we are quite busy, but we do want to still provide uh, different webinars and different learning experiences and opportunities. So just uh, look out for emails from us with different uh, webinar hostings with different departments. If you guys have a specific department that you'd like to hear from, please email admissions and I will, uh, they'll definitely be sending them to me because I work with all the student services um, and I will try to get that scheduled, if not for the rest of this year, but for early next year for you guys. So again, thank you. Thank you, Aaron and Lindsay for uh, participating in the webinar. Uh, if there's anything that you need, uh, please just reach out to admissions uh, at uncw.edu. Um, but I will hope you all have a wonderful afternoon and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Hope to Bye. see you. Thank you.